What is going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. Today we are going to be doing a realistic Carolina Panthers rebuild. I wanted to do this last night. I sat down to record and it was like 10 p.m. and I'm like, uh, I'm gonna go lie down on the couch for a minute. Just kind of, I don't really feel like sitting in the chair. I'll do the video after I rest for a bit. You know, I know it was such a terrible life I lead where I, I can't handle sitting in a chair so I have to go lie down. Anyway, I fell asleep for like five hours woke up at 2 a.m. and I'm like damn all right I'm just gonna go to sleep so here we are the next day finally getting this Carolina Panthers team and uh I'm, I'm excited it's been a while since I've done the Panthers I'm interested to see what we can pull off before we get into it I want to say a huge shout out to Amino for sponsoring today's video Amino is a new social network with millions of communities for basically every interest imaginable you can use these public chats to debate and discuss football with other users in the Gridiron Amino, and there's nothing acidic about that. You guys can also take quizzes to test your football knowledge and participate in polls, which is really cool. Definitely make sure to join me on Amino. And let me hear your top five overall players in the NFL, and you can actually post that directly on my profile, and I'll respond to some of my favorites. But you can't do any of that unless you actually download Amino, which is free, by the way. And there are links in the description as well as in the pinned comment down below. Once you have it downloaded, all you have to do is search Gridiron to join. I'll see you guys over there. All right, so per usual with these realistic rebuilds, we are starting in the exact week that it is. And this is now the start of the offseason for the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton is the quarterback. You know, I think we're probably going to be able to rock out with Cam. It is realistic. I don't really see the Panthers getting rid of him anytime soon, despite... And being, I, I guess, uh, only slightly above average. He's still, like, he's around a top 10 QB, in my opinion. He's nothing special, though, especially in the game. Only an 87 overall quick development. He's 29 now, so regression's going to start hitting. The receiving core is interesting. Like, DJ Moore, I like. He had a really good rookie season as well. He was solid. Star development, 80 overall. We'll be able to rock out with him for a while. Devin Funches is someone that I liked coming out of Michigan. However, I thought he probably should have played, you know, one of those joker roles of tight end slash wide receiver, and instead he's just a receiver, uh, and I don't know that he's a fantastic receiver. He's pretty good. Curtis Samuel, I like another one of those weird players where he's like a running back slash wide receiver, and then Torrey Smith is not that good. Neither is Jairus Wright. Was this Demetrius Bird? Demir Bird, excuse me. Um, Greg Olson at tight end is great but old he's 33 regression's gonna hit him really hard so we're gonna have to find another tight end i don't know if that's gonna be ian thomas we'll have to see on the offensive line i think trey turner taylor moten and daryl williams is a perfect group of three however with greg van roten and ryan khalil probably need to improve upon them just based on uh, age and ability alone ryan khalil was great for a while is older now and then greg van roten is 28 only a 71 overall just is not going to get it done. And Marshall Newhouse won't be able to play any of these positions. He's pretty bad. Was this Ted Larson? I can't even get to him. Uh, only a 69 overall. I mean, like, or Tyler. I, that's nice. Do you have a brother? I swear to God, Ted Larson's just an offensive lineman. So Ted Larson is. He's on the Dolphins. Are they brothers? I guess it really doesn't matter. Uh, let's, let's see. Oh, it looks like no relation. Just two Larsons playing a... Uh, offensive line that are roughly the same age whatever on the defensive side of the ball obviously Luke Keekley is a monster five-time first team all pro Thomas Davis I think is great but he is 35 so we're gonna have to get better and younger at that position Jack Thompson school uh the rest of the linebacking core I mean there's nothing crazy there and at safety like Denora Cersei is kind of a weird one I forgot he was still in the league if I'm being honest Eric Reed has, hasn't been the same since his concussions when he was uh, on the 49ers early on. He was a beast his rookie year and then just hasn't been anything beyond that. That's why when everyone's saying, like, oh, the only reason Eric Reed isn't getting signed is because uh, off the field stuff and taking knees. It's just the post with the injuries to the head, he just wasn't the same player. So I'm glad that he's on a team now. I think he's a decent player. But I don't know if he's in the future for my Carolina Panthers team, as I am now the new general manager. Mike Adams, gotta go. He's 35, 37. 30, how are you 37 years old and still playing safety? 
still still playing you know a skilled position if you will turns 38 in march as well you know hats off to mike adams man that's crazy that you can play in the nfl for that long james bradbury is very underrated uh and dante jackson very decent player as well uh both quite young dante jackson's a rookie this year or i guess was uh he is only 22 years old quick development james bradbury probably is not gonna be much older 25 quick development as well like him he was part of that like samford defensive back group with james bradbury and jaquiski tart that came in that was actually pretty good um ross cockrell's on this team captain munerlin i don't know 24 years old for kevon seymour but normal development only 75 overall and the defensive line i don't love mario addison just overall to age combo is not fantastic 80 overall uh probably will be close to an 81 overall he has more xp than you need to get a skill point and he doesn't have a skill point not really sure why that would be but he is 30 only an 80 overall only quick development uh k1 short i think is fantastic love dontari poe we're gonna have to re-sign him eventually uh vernon butler never really turned into much he was a i believe late first rounder or early second rounder at louisiana tech yeah there's la tech there i thought he was his first round pick let's let's look into that yeah round one pick 30 just hasn't ever been anything so that kind of sucks kyle love isn't here too and then julius peppers i think one of the best defensive ends in nfl history if you're being honest and you'd have to say that he is he's 38 another one i, I feel like and and someone correct me if this is wrong but the Panthers have to have the two players at, like, non-quarterback or special team position, so kicker, punter, non-QB, kicker, or punter, that add up to the most in terms of overall age. So Julius Peppers at 38 and Mike Adams at 37. Those have to be the two oldest. It has to be. And then Wes Horton as well. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a weird team. Some players are really old. I don't really know what we end up doing here. But we will figure it out. Let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason. Daryl Williams is going to be our top free agent as the Rams beat the Colts in the Super Bowl. Julius Peppers is down to a 75. I mean, like this is what I'm talking about. I can't, I can't deal with regression in this game. And not saying that that's not warranted, obviously. But all right, take take this for example. If Julius Peppers was an 82 overall, let's say when he was a 31 year old, based on the way Madden regression works. He'd go down like four overall into his 32-year-old season. So he'd be, you know, basically where he is now based on regression. However, clearly at 37, 38 years old, he's still into the 80s. And now he's only a 75. So I, I know that's kind of a weird situation because it is Julius Peppers. He's an anomaly. But uh, I can't re-sign Thomas Davis. I can't re-sign Mike Adams. I think I'm going to re-sign Eric Reed. I don't know how long. Two-year deal maybe if I can. But uh, Daryl Williams absolutely has to come back. That is priority number one. I think Devin Funches will also return. Eric Reed is going to test out free agency. Uh, he didn't accept my offer. Devin Funches did. Daryl Williams did. I could franchise tag Eric Reed. That might make more sense. He's only 26. We'd play him seven and a half per year, basically. I don't really mind that. We're going to franchise tag Eric Reed, keep him on the team for a year. So Tyron Matthew is here in free agency, as in Dominic Sue. I don't really want Dominic Sue. However, Tyra Matthew is someone that I would really, really be interested in. That'd be a perfect free safety. So I'm going to offer Tyra Matthew a lot of money to come to Carolina. And he says no. The Honey Badger is not going to go to Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, that would have made too much sense. That's super annoying. We also do have to uh, go ahead and import local file if you guys want to download it, it is bangled 2019 draft everyone always asks me what are you using your first year like i do i show it every time in the video all you have to do is watch and you'll know the answer tyron matthew oh my goodness the legion of boom is reforming tyron matthew to seattle golden tate as well he does feel like a seattle receiver honestly i wonder why all right, draft time. We pick at number 13. Cardinals on the clock first. They go whoever they went with. And uh, A.J. Brown gets drafted by the Green Bay Packers. I actually put out a tweet. You guys can feel free to follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs. Where I talked about 
the possibility of the Green Bay Packers trading for Antonio Brown, a different A. Brown receiver, but I guess that's not really a conversation for right now. All right, Deontay Thompson's available. I know I've mocked this a couple times to the Panthers, but this makes a ton of sense to me. And Deontay Thompson will be the newest Carolina Panther. Welcome to Charlotte, 78 overall star development. Only 22 years of age. 91 speed, 84 zone, 84 hit power. Kind of uh, the do-it-all safety. And he's going to do it all over at free safety, I believe. Ooh, Packers getting Noah Fant. They're really doing their best to rebuild that offense as we are here in round two. Not really looking for a quarterback. Although we could take a tight end. Irv Smith Jr. is available. And I think I'm going to do just that. Welcome to Charlotte. 77 overall star development. One of the best tight ends in the draft. You could say he's the first. You could say he's the third. Anywhere in the middle. 83 speed, 85 catching, 82 catching traffic. Good route running. Irv Smith Jr. is a really, really good player. I love the three tight ends at the top this year. With Albert Okwebunam, with Noah Fant, and Irv Smith, they're a really, really good group as Tyler Biedish goes to the Miami Dolphins. Ja'Kai Polite falls to the third, and he goes to the Green Bay Packers. All right, let's go Chase Winovich here out of Michigan. 75 overall, normal development, 23 years old. He's decent. We'll probably try and start him year one. 80 speed, 82 finesse move, 78 block shit. He's okay. I don't know if we've drafted him yet in this series, but, you know, he reminds me of Kevin Green. <laughs> Just appearance-wise. Uh, and, you know, he was pretty good for the Panthers for a while, as you all will know. Let's go Dakota Allen here out of Texas Tech. The former last chance U star. 73 overall. He honestly reminds me a lot of Shaq Thompson. It's maybe a little bit worse right now. 82 speed, but 83 zone coverage. So... Really, really good coverage there. Solid fourth round pick. That to our linebacker depth. Let's go Joe Deneen here out of Kansas. Not going to be a great player. He's a nice player at 69 overall, but uh, nothing special really. He keeps staying on the board. We'll go Jaquan Johnson. Just more depth. Only a 64 overall. Uh, someone that can maybe make an impact on special teams. I, I don't know. <laughs> and that is the end of the draft for us. All right, draft recap. We got Deontay Thompson to start things off, then Irv Smith Jr., Chase Winovich, Dakota Allen, Joe Deneen, and Jaquan Johnson. Obviously, it's going to get worse as you go down. But, you know, we did pretty well. Two instant starters, probably. Uh, I mean, I guess Greg Olson's going to start this year. I don't, I don't really know what to do about that. Is anybody good in free agency? Like a left guard, maybe? T-Sizzle's here, but uh, no one I really have any interest in. Uh, yeah, gonna pass. Although, we could use a backup running back. Let's, uh, ugh. let's sign Theo Riddick. Good receiving back. Not to say that Christian McCaffrey isn't. He's probably the best receiving back in the NFL. I guess we'll get another one. That, that signing makes no sense, actually. It's just a higher overall backup, honestly. This is what the team's going to look like, though. We are starting Chase Winovich. Julius Peppers is the backup right end. We got Mario Addison. Good group of cornerbacks. Kind of. I like James Bradbury and Dante Jackson. Deontay Thompson going to start at strong safety. Dakota Allen will be backup little mi uh, middle linebacker. Little linebacker. That's kind of interesting. Little mindbacker. Whatever. To Luke Keekley. On the offense, I really wish we could start Irv Smith as Greg Olson has regressed from a 90 to an 85. So that kind of sucks. We just, we're just we just not going to re-sign him. Uh, and then Curtis Samuel, I guess, will be receiver three. I guess. What I want to do in the specialist area is change everything around here. And I think what I want to do is get Irv Smith as our slot receiver, maybe. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be interesting. He'd be a mismatch, that's for sure. Here we are at the midseason mark. We are... 3 and 5 at the bottom of the NFC South as the Saints fall to 3 and 4, Bucks 3 and 4, Falcons at 7 and 1. Okay, interesting. That's all I have to say. It's interesting. Thomas Davis will be a free agent at the end of the year. I'm not looking to re-sign him. I can tell you that right now. Uh, I'm not looking to re-sign anybody. Kenyon Barner, pass Brian Cox, no. Demir Bird, no. 36-year-old Thomas Davis at that point? No, thank you. Playoff time, we are 6-9-1. Nice. 
Gotta love that. We'll check out the stats of this year and see what went wrong. And I think the biggest thing that went wrong, besides Cam Newton being 32nd in the NFL in passing yards and 30th in passing touchdowns, is uh, that we play in a really, really tough division now with the Falcons being sick and the Panthers uh, being bad now, as you can see, and the Saints being pretty good as well. Cam Newton, not a great year by any means, just just not fantastic. Christian McCaffrey was overall pretty solid. Can't hate on 12 or yards, seven touchdowns, averaging over four per carry. Devin Funches was decent. Where's Irv Smith? 789 yards on 62 catches, five touchdowns in there as well. Tied for the team lead in touchdowns and had the most yards. So, you know, maybe it was a good idea to keep him in the slot. Daryl Williams led up a sack a game. Hate that. Luke Keekley led the team in tackles with 122. Tackles for loss would be 17 from Dantari Poe. 12 from the rookie Chase Winovich. We're getting almost no pressure. Dantari Poe led the team with four sacks. Keekley also had four interceptions. No one had more than one. In total, it looks like we only had seven. Was that is that six or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh, yikes! Only six interceptions for the entire team. Only two force fumbles. We get two defensive touchdowns though. Deontay Thompson and Dante Jackson with the 25th ranked offense and probably a bottom defense. 15th, really? All right. Didn't force many turnovers. Drew Brees wins MVP. Doubt we're gonna see any Panthers in here. NFC Offense Player of the Year is Ezekiel Elliott. No Panthers. Defensive Player of the Year is Deion Jones. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Drew Locke with the Giants. Irv Smith at number four. No other Panthers. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Devin Bush with the Lions, keeping him in Michigan. Devin White to the Niners. Greedy Williams to the Bucks. Deontay Thompson to the Panthers. This looks so much like my mock draft. It's not even funny. The most recent one I put out. Uh, no other Panthers other than Deontay Thompson at four. We really missed out on not being able to sign Tyre Matthew. And I offered him a lot of money. He just didn't want it. I don't really care about Theo Riddick. As the Texans beat the Saints in the Super Bowl. 24-16. We'll have to see if the Texans can even beat the Colts. I don't think they'll be able to. Phillip Rivers is a free agent. CJ Mosley's here. CJ Mosley's here. And LaMarcus Joyner. And Matt Paradis. Ooh, we're going to sign a lot of free agents this time around, probably. All right, moment of truth. We did get C.J. Mosley, and we did get Matt Paradis. So we have an instant upgrade on the offensive line. Matt Paradis is going to start at center, be our highest overall offensive lineman. And then defensively, you got to wonder why I signed C.J. Mosley with Luke Keekley, but it makes all the sense in the world. C.J. Mosley can kick outside to right outside linebacker, and then we have arguably the best linebacking core in the entire NFL. C.J. Mosley, Luke Keekley, and Shaq Thompson. That is a very, very solid group. And it probably would rival whatever the Cowboys have in this with Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch and Sean Lee. It probably would. NFL draft time. I would say the player I'd most want to get right now, we do pick at number seven, um, would be Grant Delpit. The pit of despair. But I don't think he's going to be available at number seven. Tua goes to the Jets at number one overall. The Bucks go Jerry Judy, another player is looking at. Walker Little out of Stanford to the Niners, probably that Joe Staley replacement, AJ Espen's Epineza. Lions go LaVisca. We could get out of this. Raiders don't take Grant Delpit. They go Najee Harris. Najee Harris to the Oakland Raiders. And I think that will leave me with Grant Delpit. Welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina. Grant Delpit, 78 overall star development. Now we have the Alabama LSU SEC defensive back combo at safety with Delpit. Deontay Thompson, another LSU guy, and Dante Jackson at cornerback. It's a shame we have James Bradbury who went to Samford. Otherwise, we could have a great Alabama LSU secondary. That'd be pretty cool. Dude, Jonathan Taylor's here in the second round. We don't need running back, though. Travis Etienne's here as well. Voshan Joseph, but we don't need him. Kendrick Rogers is interesting. He wouldn't be able to fit. I'm going to go Alex Leatherwood, another Bama boy. He's going to play left guard. He has star development, although that doesn't mean anything because offensive linemen are impossible to upgrade in a, in franchise. But uh, he will start at left guard, probably. My guy Sam Ellinger is here. Michael Divinity, he's been a problem for me in uh, Ozark State Dynasty. If you guys watch that series on my channel. I, I, the support on it has been amazing, so I thank you guys for that. Uh, I almost want to go Dory Nethers here out of Louisville. C.D. Lamb's here. He just wouldn't have a spot. Bryce Hall looks terrible. 
We'll go Jiso uh, Josiah Scott here out of Michigan State. Just cornerback depth. I don't think he's going to be very good. 73 quick. Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty not good. And I think that's going to do it for the draft. So Julius Peppers retired. 73 overall. Mario Addison's going to start at right end, I guess. I don't really want that. Like, at all. Adam Humphreys is here. I don't really want that. TJ Yeldon's going to be our backup running back. We'll sign him to a one-year deal. And, uh, yeah, I don't really care for anything else here. I'm going to start Irv Smith now over Greg Olson. Not going to cut Greg Olson because of uh, cap reasons. Offensive line is good. Trey Turner is going to move over to left guard. Whether uh, Leatherwood is going to play right guard. Offensive line is fine now. Receiving core, we're still working on it. Curtis Samuel is going to be our slot guy. We got DJ Moore. We got Devin Funches. It's a good one-two combo. And then defensively, really good linebacking core. Secondary is okay. I moved Eric Reed down to cornerback, and he's going to play that nickel role. I think that's going to be a perfect fit for him. Dante Jackson, James Bradbury makes up a good CB group. And then we have to focus heavily on defensive end in this next draft slash free agency. Specialist, um, Grant Elpit is not going to play slot corner. So I do have to fix that. This is going to be the team for season number three, technically, even though we didn't even play at all in season one. Cam Newton, still rocking out with him at, at a quarterback. It's kind of whatever. And then uh, defensively, I think our defense is getting really, really solid. Again, just, just defensive end is an issue right now. But I'm going to simulate to the midseason mark. I will see you guys there. At the midseason mark, we are 2-5-1. The Falcons are just killing it. We are coming off a victory, at least, although it is against the Cardinals, so not too impressive there. Although I will upgrade this team. I don't think we're necessarily out of the playoff race. It's just going to be difficult. This is not a team that I thought would be able to win immediately, but I think we're definitely moving in the right direction. I want to focus on upgrading special teams at some point. Kicker and punter. Um, you know, they're not terrible, to be fair. Graham Gano is really good, and you know, he's not even from... The U.S. I think he's from Ireland. Excuse me, he's from Scotland. That is my bad. Scotland! Uh, Michael Pilardi is good. It's just like, I, I, I see our, uh, our team overall being weighed down by special teams, but we got a decent special teams unit, so I don't really know why that would be. 83 offense, 85 defense, but only an 81 overall. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I will upgrade them, though. We do also have to re-sign Shaq Thompson. James Bradbury as well. Eric Reed. I don't know of it. We're not going to deal with Eric Reed right now. But Shaq Thompson and James Bradbury definitely need extensions before we go any further. All right, both of those guys re-signed. Again, not sure about anybody else at the moment. Things could change. All right, playoff time. We'll see if we can make it. I don't think so. Next year, though, I do have high expectations for this team. We did not make the playoffs. We finished 6-9-1. and one. Again, nice. As Daniel Jones wins MVP. Interesting. I mean, it could happen in real life, I guess. But uh, I don't know how good the odds on that are. Cam Newton had a better year. Same completion percentage. More yards, more touchdowns. So that's that overall is better. Christian McCaffrey was really good. Receiving Devin Funches led our team in catches. However, yards was DJ Moore. Also, touchdowns with eight. Irv Smith Jr. at starting tight end, six touchdowns, 644 yards, or 41 yards on 66 catches. Curtis Samuel is pretty good as well. Offensive line, not terrible for what Madden is. Luke Keekley leads our team in tackles. Tackles for loss would be K1 Short with 21, 16 for Dontari Poe, 13 for Mario Addison, 12 for CJ Mosley, also 11 for Luke Keekley and Chase Winovich. Sacks, six and a half for K1 Short, four and a half for CJ Mosley, four for both Chase Winovich and Mario Addison. And then interceptions, three for Dante Jackson led the team. A few other players with two, C.J. Mosley, Luke Keighley, Deontay Thompson. Force fumbles, uh, two in general. And then at least one defensive touchdown. That is C.J. Mosley, another Alabama player. That's all I do now. I just build SEC defenses. Daniel Jones is your MVP. Uh, no Panthers in there. A NFC Office Player of the Year is Ezekiel Elliott, I believe, again. Defensive Player of the Year is Jalen Smith. No Panthers. Offensive Rookie of the Year is LaVisca Chenault. Okay, he's a good player. I like him a lot at Colorado. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Voshan Joseph. Grant Delpit at number two. Ah, uh, just missed it. 
All right, time to see if we're going to re-sign any of those players that I wasn't sure about earlier. TJ Yeldon, I mean, it doesn't really make sense to. I can just sign anybody out of free agency if I need a backup running back. And then Eric Reed now is 28, still not even an 80 overall. This is now the regression point if he hasn't started already. Uh, I, I think we're going to let him go. We got Grant Elpit. We don't really need him. Show me a great pass. How about Von Miller as a pass rusher? Show me Von Miller. Alvin Kamara, don't need him. Allen Robinson, ooh, that's it. That's tempting. Derrick Henry, Tariq Cohen, Philip Rivers, Jason Kelsey's here. Allen Robinson might get an offer. 10 mil per year, that's not terrible, I guess. Malcolm Jenkins is here. Mike Daniels, I don't want. Justin Simmons, I don't want. Trubisky, I don't want. Uh, I, I mean, Justin Houston's the best pass rusher here, but he's just not that good anymore. He's 32. I don't really have a ton of interest in, in free agency. It just might be Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson has accepted. Now we have a really good group of three receivers. Allen Robinson, Devin Funches, DJ Moore, which means Curtis Samuel can actually move to running back. And I expect his overall to go up quite considerably due to his abilities. Curtis Samuel, I think, is probably more of a true running back. Think about what he did at Ohio State as well. Kind of like that gadget player. He's an 89 overall at running back. So that's a fun backup. We don't have to rely on uh, TJ Logan. We have a really solid offense now. I like I like where we are. Draft time. We got another top 10 pick. Bengals are at number one. Whoever they take, they took Jedrick Willis. It's just Bama. That's what the drafts are going to look like for the next several years. Just Alabama players going ridiculously high. As I think the perfect player is available for me right here. Micah Parsons out of Penn State. Really good run stuffer. Uh, run stuffer and power rusher for the Nittany Lions. We're going to take him. We're going to play him at right end. He is a 79 overall with star development, only 20 years old, 88 tackle, 81 hit power, 85 power moves with 83 block shed. He obviously will not be wearing number 11 for us. Probably 91 if it's available, um, which I think it should be. Yeah. He's going to play at right end. Jeffrey Okuda, another good player out of Ohio State. Um, Justin Fields is interesting. I don't really want to take him, though. What position do we even need at this point? I like our offensive line. I like our receiving core. I like our tight end. I think our backfield's pretty good. I like our cornerbacks for the most part. Maybe we'll take a cornerback here. We'll go Brendan Radley Hiles out of Oklahoma. Top player available. Don't have him scouted. 75 overall star development is not bad. He'll be a solid number three. We're going to trade this third rounder for a second next year with the Dallas Cowboys, and I think that's probably going to do it for the draft, as we got a really good group of players. Number one I am most excited about, we're going to slide him down, he should go up into the 80s as well. Micah Parsons, uh, he's not going to wear 58, that's Thomas Davis's number, he will wear number 91, it is available, that looks very, very good, and uh, he's a really good player, so I wonder if that overall is going to bump up or stay at a 79, looks like it's going to stay at a 79. Brennan Radley Hiles is not bad. We didn't really get much in the way. Tylen Wallace. This is a really interesting player out of Oklahoma State. He torched Texas for like 200 plus uh, this past season. He looked pretty good. It is the Big 12, so you got to wonder about that ability. But he destroyed Texas, as I said. He, I thought his overall would bump up. Kind of a shame. This is the offense. I think it's a really good group. The best offense we've had by far. Same thing with the defense as well. I really like this team. Deontay Thompson, Grant Delpit, uh, and then Dante Jackson, James Bradbury is a really good, really good group of guys in the secondary. Defensive line, I think, is the best we've had as well. Linebacking core goes without saying how talented they are. I am ready to do the dang thing. All right, we're going to simulate to the midseason mark. I have high hopes for this team. I think this is a playoff caliber team. See if we can get there in now the 2021 season. Five and two at the midseason mark. Falcons are undefeated at 7-0 is the only problem there. Not going to worry about re-signing anybody at this point, though. We're just going to upgrade, and then I'll see you guys for the playoffs. I've been simulating week by week now to see how this goes, upgrading players along the way. And we just beat the Saints 34-31. The Falcons are 10-0. 10-0. I'm not going to play the game. I'm just going to jump in and see the overalls real quick. Falcons are an 89 overall, so they're no joke. We're an 87 this is going to be a very interesting matchup. I'm going to upgrade. There's so much on the line here. All right, moment of truth. 
Can we beat them? No, we lost. Falcons, uh, they're 11 and 0 now. Wow, it was so close as well. 32 29. Unfortunate. All right, I'm gonna simulate just to the playoffs now. I think it's 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 pretty much given that we're gonna make the playoffs given our record, and uh, I'm almost positive we're gonna finish at eight and eight. At, after going eight and two, yeah. Cue the curb your enthusiasm music. Are you kidding me? What a joke! Come on. We started off one and two, and then we won so many straight, only to lose out the rest of the season. I mean, you got to be kidding me at that point. All right, we'll do one more. <laughs> what a joke. All right, well, now I have to worry about re-signing players. Christian McCaffrey, Curtis Samuel, Cam Newton, Taylor Moten, Dontari Poe is down to a 79. All right, well, we do have the money, so this probably won't be too tough. Although Christian McCaffrey, he's not, he's not asking for that much. All right, Cam Newton wants a lot. I'll give him a three-year deal. The cap hit on that is going to be about $20 million per year. That is very tough, but we're going to rock out with them. When I do the fantasy rebuild where pretty much anything goes, I probably won't re-sign Cam Newton. I'll, I'll trade him for something, but in the realistic, I'm obviously going to keep him. All right, Taylor Moten, Cam Newton, Curtis Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, all re-sign. Not too worried about anybody else. I do need to get a defensive tackle this year as the Falcons get stopped in their tracks. Did they? They went 15-1. I was like, did they go undefeated? No. Uh, we'll check out our stats. But they lose in the Super Bowl. And then, much better season from Cam Newton. Much better season. Top seven in, in passing overall. Christian McCaffrey was a little bit worse, but more touchdowns. About the same number of yards. Allen Robinson was excellent. 1,100 yards receiving on 91 catches. 11 touchdowns as well. Blocking. Offensive line was about as good as you can expect from Madden. Luke Kiki led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss went to Dontari Poe with 16. who also had seven and a half sacks. 16 for K1 Short. Bunch of guys with double-digit tackles for loss. Micah Parsons as a rookie, 13 sacks. That might be rookie of the year. 7.5 for Poe, 7 for C.J. Mosley. Interceptions, 3 for C.J. Mosley, 3 for James Bradbury. Force fumbles, we got 2 for Brennan Radley-Hiles as a rookie. Any defensive touchdowns, I see at least one. It is Dakota Allen. Okay, we had the 12th offense end. The 19th defense, I mean, we collapsed at the end of the year there. Matt Ryan wins MVP. A little bit surprised Cam Newton's not in there. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Ezekiel Elliott. Cam Newton in there at number 8. Defensive Player of the Year is Devondre Campbell. CJ Mosley at 3. Luke Keekley at 8. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Trevor Lawrence with the Bucks, And they also got Michael Warren, who's number 2. No Panthers. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Micah Parsons. Brandon Radley-Hiles at number 2. Another Panther. Teron Vincent at number 8. All right, the, the next year, we're going to kill it. All right, we do have some money. Here's the way the offense looks. 89 offense. Could maybe get an offensive lineman, depending on who's there. The rest of the offense is fine. And then defensively, I think we're perfect. 95 defense. Grant Delpit's up to a 93. Deontay Thompson at a 91. Dante Jackson's a 93. James Bradbury hasn't gone up very much. We need a defensive tackle badly. Micah Parsons is at a 93. Chase Winovich only at an 80. So we could improve at, at defensive end, but really it's going to come down to defensive tackle. Uh, yeah, I mean, defensive rookie of the year, making the Pro Bowl. You have superstar development now. Micah Parsons was a pretty good draft pick. Show me a defensive tackle. That's what I need. Derek Nottie. He's not bad, to be fair. Uh, Puna Ford, hook him horns. Uh, I mean, I, we could go after him. All right, Nottie is now on the team. He is going to play defensive tackle next to K1 Short. He's going to be a good scheme fit as well. I like to see that. Team's looking really, really solid. I didn't really want to sign anything else, so we will go into the draft now. See if anything's available. Hopefully, I don't even know what we do. I, I, what will we do? If, if there's like a really good defensive end, could go with that. But I think the team overall is pretty set. And I think this is not going to be a, a draft class. I think this is going to be... CPU auto-generated, if I'm not mistaken. We pick at number 18. We'll see what's available. All right, what's here? We could go offensive line. We could go defensive line with a defensive tackle or an edge. Let's just go with another defensive tackle. Virgil Beckham out of Delaware State. 78 overall quick development. 91 strength, 83 block shed. Not terrible. I think we're going to go back-to-back -back offensive line here, depending on who's available. I'm going Griffin Fells here out of UConn. 74 overall, normal development. Not overall, like, it's not terrible, but 
He's just depth at this point. I think our team is pretty much set. I'm going to take a center, though, with this next pick. Oh, the center is uh, not available. Okay. How about a backup tight end? Kiefer Frank out of Boise State. Go Broncos. 76 overall quick development. Ranked number 32. We take him at 57. Not too bad. We'll go backup running back. George Reed out of Mount Union. 75 overall. Not terrible. On matter of uh, Pierre Garcon. A few others in the NFL. But I think that's going to do it for this draft. I am ready for the final season. Let's get it. DJ Moore, Allen Robinson make up a really good receiving core. We also have uh, Curtis Samuel as a sick backup running back. D Funch, wide receiver three. Defense is amazing. Micah Parsons has developed so well, so quickly. Already a 92 overall. 96 power moves on him. And uh, this has got to be a playoff team. It just has to be. We'll go to the midseason mark. Take it from there. We are 5-3. and three. In prime position to take the NFC South. I guess we're relying on the Falcons to lose a little bit. But we do have a bunch of upgrade points. So we will be spending those. Here is the upgraded offense. Not too bad. Here's the upgraded defense. It's a 99 overall. Delpit, Thompson. I mean, everyone just started getting upgraded so quickly. Kind of out of nowhere. Um, like, some guys haven't moved at all. Like, Chase Winovich or James Bradbury. I think he's gone up, what, three overall the entire thing? But uh, other And CJ Mosley's only gone up two since we signed him. Shaq Thompson's barely moved. But it's that just shows how important the development rating is. It really does. So we're at the top 7-5-0. and oh. The Falcons just started losing, although we're not winning. So it doesn't really make up for it. I'm going to upgrade, and then hopefully we can beat the Falcons. This is a super important Week 14 matchup. Come on, Panthers. Keep on pounding. All right, we lost. So keep pounding is, uh, I mean, it, it, it's going very poorly. We need to beat the Saints, though. They're only 4-7-2. and two. This has got to be a win. Winning out would mean a lot towards going to the playoffs. We are. We are 8-6. Got to beat the Redskins here. Or maybe not, but I would like to. And uh, we do. We're 9-6. and six. Falcons are 7-7-1. Seven, seven, and one. So we have actually secured the division. We're going to go to the playoffs. Shockingly. If we finish 10-6, and six, it's not terrible. But I don't think we're going to beat the Browns who are 10-6. And, and we don't. 9-7. and seven, And we'll play the 9-7 and seven 49ers in the wild card. We are home, though. So I guess that's a bonus. We just lost 48-27 to the Browns. So that kind of sucks. This is the upgraded team for the playoffs. It, it, is, it looks really good. Uh, offense is not fantastic, but the defense is unreal. Grant Delpit is a 99. Micah Parsons is a 98. Brad, uh, Brandon Riley Hiles is a 91. I don't know why James Bradbury is not going up at all. It's annoying. Deontay Thompson's a 94. Derek Nottie's up to an 87. K1 Short's going down. Chase Winovich is up to an 82. So that's pretty solid. We're going to hop in, play the moments, jump in only if we need to. We are a 92. The 49ers are a 90, though. This one not going to be easy. All right, going into the half, we are up 20 to 14 over the Niners. And uh, they're not messing around, though. They're going to retake the lead 21 20. I'm not going to jump in just yet. We got the lead back at 23 21, but the Niners looks like are probably going to score here. It is 28 23. I do have to jump in probably and try to stop this 49ers offense. I want to make it further than the wild card. Can't end the video on a wild card loss. I mean, I guess I could, and I, I will if we lose, but <laughs> I hope we don't throw the ball. Where are you, Radley Hiles? They just destroyed that zone. It's Jimmy Jesus. What do I expect? Get there. I guess that's not getting there with Keekly, and Matt Breed is just going to bowl right through everybody. That's how this game's going to go. Okay. Shut that down. Good tackle. I believe that was Chase Winovich. Third and four. We're going to hold on to our timeouts. We're going to pinch that line. And we're going to make a stop here to run up the middle. Down goes the running back, Matt Breida. 116 to play. And it looks like the 49ers are going to try a deep field goal here. And this one is super deep from, what, 57 yards? Kick is up and no good. Wide right. There's still a chance. We're going to hop on offense. That post is going to be wide open. There we go. DJ Moore. And that's got to be a face mask as well. He's going to tack on some yards there to the end of that big completion. We're on the 14 now. Touchdown wins the game. We're going to lean on the running back, Christian McCaffrey. Here's the handoff. We're going to spin back. Good juke. All right, good gain. 
Right, we're in a bad spot. It's third and five. We did not get the first down. I don't even know what I want to do here. Time is ticking as well. We're going to run with Cam Newton. No, we're sacked. Ah, all right. Fourth and five. That's open. Just sit down. Get there, Irv Smith. There we go. That's our final timeout. Oh, I kind of wish I didn't call that. Got to throw the ball so quick because... Well, actually, we could probably run the ball here. This is a really weak look by the 49ers, and this doesn't end the game if we get stopped. Here's the handoff. Christian McCaffrey. All right, get back to the line, please. Might try it again. This is going to be the final play. Get it snapped. Here's the run. McCaffrey, end zone, touchdown. It's a walk-off as time expires. This Panthers team is going to the divisional. Had to make it close. <laughs> it's as close as it gets. Uh, we have the Rams in the divisional. That's annoying. All right. I'm ready for the challenge. 92 overall against 92 overall. Kind of a boring game so far, but it looks like the Rams just started dominating out of nowhere. We had a 6-0 lead. We could only get field goals, and we still have only gotten field goals. It's 14-9. Red zone alert. I'm going to hope the offense can get it done. 15-14 now. Rams go back up ahead. 20-15. We got to score a touchdown. Third down alert. Let's get it. Fourth down alert. Fourth and three. We might go for it here. The Rams have three turnovers, and we only have a lead. Uh, or we only had a, a, a lead for a short time. We're down now at 20 to 15. Hopefully a slant gets open, and that's I, I get sacked immediately before I can even throw the ball. Okay. But I guess they turned it over right back on literally the next play. Okay. Hey, I like that. I like that a lot. Rolling out with Cam Newton. Somebody get open. I mean, that's no one's getting open at all. Corey Littleton gets a sack. Cam Newton feels really slow for a mobile quarterback. There we go. Tight end. Irv Smith Jr.'s open. He's got the end zone. He's got the touchdown. Game of the line. Big stop here. I'll let you guys know if we make any big plays. Like a user pick with C.J. Mosley. That's got to be a pick. It's Brendan Radley Hiles. Just go down, buddy. We can ice it. What a play. The Rams have turned over the ball five times, and we only have a three-point lead. This is an embarrassing win, honestly. We're going to try a pitch here with McCaffrey on third down. Just wanted to uh, kind of waste some time. Waste their timeouts. Juke back. It's a terrible one. I don't know why I try the juke in this game. It's, it's awful. I just got to spin. Spinning is winning. I guess we'll punt the ball back. You guys know I am the best punter on YouTube. Michael Pilardi. Pin him deep. This is going to be a good punt, too, with the wind. Get there. Get there. Get there! Best putter on YouTube, baby! <laughs> Again, no one really wants that as their claim to fame, but I'll take it. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. Just underneath the first here. How about a user pick now with CJ Mosley? All right, fourth down. Game on the line here for the Rams if they don't get it. The game is over, uh, and I read that all the way and then thought, no way they'll throw right at me. I threw right at me. Oh, it's another interception. This time, Dante Jackson, and that will end the game. This Panthers team is going to the NFC Championship. 23-20 is your final, and I will see you guys when we find out who our opponent is. All right, we got the Dallas Cowboys. They are... Obviously going to be home. 97 overall. Wow. All right. We got our work cut out for us. That's for sure. We have a really interesting situation here. One minute, 20 seconds left in the game. And uh, it looks like the Cowboys have managed to go all the way down the field. We've turned over the ball three times, apparently. Um, we're up 28-22. It needs to be a touchdown. We need to stop them. I went up with Deontay Thompson. They're throwing back in the end zone. No, it's a touchdown to LeBlanc. How? All right, we need a field goal. We don't have to get too aggressive. Might just be check downs and try to dink and dunk all the way down the field. Set up for a game-winning field goal and uh, kick this team back to the Super Bowl. Open down the field. That's going to be Allen Robinson. He jukes back inside and breaks a tackle, and we are just about in field goal range. 
I am going to run the ball here. I want to waste that final timeout. I think we can get in field goal range, but it doesn't matter. Christian McCaffrey, there's a spin move of dreams, and he is gone. End zone, touchdown. <laughs> That's why the, I use the spin over the, over, over the uh, juke. Everyone always wants me to juke. I know in Giants franchise, they're like, juke, juke, it's so good. It, it isn't. The spin equals the win. All day. Prescott rolls out, and he goes down. Ball's loose. And it's recovered by C.D. Lamb. Wow. I don't know why, but, like, I really couldn't see him going to Dallas, and it would crush me. Because even though I hate Oklahoma, C.D. Lamb is so good and so fun to watch. Um, and I hate the Cowboys, too. It just it feels like it'd be too right. I would hate him, probably, if he went to the Cowboys, though. He'd be, he'd be too good. I think C.D. Lamb's going to be a monster. Third and 13, and that is going to be a dropped interception. It's going to be fourth and 13 now as we get the third down stop. James Bradbury, like, I need you to come up clutch there, please. You made a nice play. Finish it. Get the interception. 14 seconds to play. They have one timeout. Um, I'll let him go over the middle of the field, bird that final timeout. They need a touchdown. They're lobbing it up. Get there, Keekly. There's a flag. Hey, that's fine. I think I'm going to go with a turnover on downs here. That's the game. This Carolina Panthers team is going back to the Super Bowl. It feels good. Feels good, man. Why would you call a timeout there, Jason Garrett, you, you, you clown? All right, Panthers, Steelers, Super Bowl. We're going to upgrade the team, and that is going to be Grant Delpit, Dante Jackson, Chris McCaffrey. The rich get richer. Our better players get better. This will be the final upgrade. Um, DJ Moore up to a 96, I think is pretty noticeable. But defensively, Micah Parsons is a 99. Grant Delpit is a 99. Dante Jackson's up to a 98. It feels so great. Now we're going to play the moments. Hopefully beat the Steelers. We're a 92 overall to their 90. It's got to be a win. Keep pounding. Le'Veon Bell still on the Steelers. It's actually funny. Brendan Radley Hiles actually returned an interception to the house in this game. But it looks like it's still anybody's game. 14-14. Just about going into the half here. 21-14. But we're going to tie it up? I think so. 21-21. And we're officially in the second half. I don't want to have to take over. You guys know I'll, I'll manage to find a way to lose. All right. Okay. We're in a bad spot. A minute and seven to go. We're actually in a pretty good spot. But it's a little bit bad. Because the Steelers can tie things up with a touchdown. I'm not really playing for overtime here. 38 31 I don't like that come on okay they go to the I don't I don't know what that animation is will Disley uh, stays in bounce as uh O'Brien is their quarterback it looks like they're gonna spike it another will Disley pass I don't know what they're doing there on third and nine picking up maybe a yard or two yeah it's gonna be fourth and seven they have to go for it here obviously that goes without saying can we get the stop 30 seconds to go I don't really like the defense that I'm in, if I'm being honest. And they throw end zone incomplete. Deontay Thompson breaks it up. And that should secure the Super Bowl. The Lombardi Trophy comes to Charlotte. The Carolina Panthers are Super Bowl champions. 38-31 is your final. The blue confetti rains down. Good stuff. We had a lot of really good players in this. Micah Parsons is a, a god i try to go after players that i don't usually draft or i should say in each rebuild video that i do i try to go after a new player and this time i did get a repeat one i, I believe grant delpit was drafted also to the jacksonville jaguars when i did that video but um we got michael parsons for the first time that was an interesting one he was fantastic and um who else who did i take in the first round of the first year I don't know. Er Smith, I think, was in the second. Who did I take in the first? Deontay Thompson. That's right. Might be the first time I've grabbed him as well. But uh, this is a good win. Good victory. And uh, let's watch them raise the Lombardi Trophy. Our gratification, I guess, for uh, a few years of building. DJ Moore, Luke Keekley, Cam Newton, and Christian McCaffrey are graced with the podium. But that is going to do it for me, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.
I did it too early, but okay, so goodbye. Thank you.